everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would do a video giving you my 10 tips when it comes to home renovating. Now I'm no expert, but I have just had so many people over the time ask me like loads of different bits of advice when it comes to renovating their home. When Chris and I bought this house, this was a major project for us. We had renovated our previous house, but this one was like extending out, extending up. So it was a much bigger project for us. So I thought I would share with you today my 10 like major tips that I would give before you start kind of renovating any home because I really wish that someone had kind of given me these tips before and if you're watching this and you are like a pro you might think I'm missing things out and if I have missed things out please comment down below because um, if I can make another one of these videos and that would be really really useful as I'm sure um, so many people go through the same kind of process we have. If you're watching this video and you're new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. I'll also link below all of the videos I made whilst we renovated this house, as well as our before house tour and our after house tour as well. And our house has changed quite a lot since our after house tour, so I am gonna do a new one really, really soon. So I'm just gonna jump straight into with my tip number one. And the main tip that I think I would give people is to live in your house before you start renovating. Get into your new home and kind of track down the time you spend in each room. I think by doing that, it allows you to understand where you want to kind of prioritize your budget and where you feel maybe you could spend less money in the rooms that you're not going to be in as often as you think you are. You want to see where the sunrise and the sun sets and where the sun lands in your house throughout the day. I feel like when we did this house, because we didn't give it enough time to see how everything works, we put these massive big skylights into our extension room and then we mounted our TV on this wall here and it is actually that wall that gets all of the sun in the afternoon. So if you're ever watching TV, you can't really watch it properly because the sun is streaming through the sky lanterns. So in hindsight, we should have really popped the TV on the other side of the um, extension. But then at the same time, that's the kind of kitchen area and the dining area. So, you know, all these different things we probably would have thought about a lot more had we kind of mapped the house better. But that is just one little minor thing that I would say, definitely live in your house, map out how you use your house and how you want to use it. And by doing this, it will help you out when it comes to budgeting for each room when you come to your build. My next tip is architects. So we chose our architect, we got recommended this architect, he was absolutely amazing. But what I would say is he came around and he kind of did a drawing, got all the measurements of our house and I told him exactly what I wanted. Because I had a vision in my head, I knew while I was telling him what I wanted, I knew how I wanted it to look. So when he came back with the drawings, I knew I wanted these bifolding doors to go um, the whole back span of our house. And when he came back, he said, I have to have a pillar bang in the middle to support the beam. But I pushed back on the architect and I said, I don't want that. I want it to just be one big open space because I didn't want to have this beam to be looking at, especially as you'd be coming through our front door and you'd see the beam in your eye line. So I pushed back and then we spoke to a structural engineer and the structural engineer said, yep, absolutely fine to have um, one big long steel along the back wall. So I really feel like if you get an architect, they do obviously deliver what you ask them for, but if you're looking at your drawings and you're thinking, mm, not really what I wanted, and they're saying, oh, but you have to have that, just push back and say to them, can we speak to somebody else and see if it's at all possible? Because nine times out of 10, maybe eight times out of 10, you will surprise yourself and you will be able to get what you initially wanted. Right, my tip number three is probably one of the most important things and it is budget. Budget can be the most stressful part of any build and whenever you are building, no matter how big or how small it is, there are always gonna be like unsuspected costs that kind of crop up. For example, with us, we had a quote from our builder and our foundations were gonna cost 2,000 pounds, for example, and then um, the architect then said, actually, you live on London clay, you need your foundations piled, and our foundation cost went from 2,000 pounds to 10,000 pounds. We were just not expecting that at all. We had not budgeted for it. 
I think we were very, very unlucky because we live on London Clay. We also had 21 tree stumps ground out of our garden. But because of that, it meant the ground outside was so used to having so much of the water absorbed from it that suddenly that was all taken away. And the architect was really worried about subsidence in our house, which is why we had to have it done. So what I'm saying is always have a bigger budget than you have been quoted from your builder because things will always crop up. When Chris and I were doing this build, I would have sleepless nights because I just didn't know how our budget was going to stretch to kind of fulfill this whole build. So my fourth tip would be to get a lot of quotes. Don't go with the first quote that you get from a builder. Get at least three quotes from different builders because you will see the price range will vary so much. And they will also give you their quote, but don't forget about the 20% VAT that they'll be adding on top because they will not, well most builders, will not quote you with the VAT and then you forget about the VAT and suddenly they're like, oh yeah, but plus 20% because of the VAT. I would always go on a recommendation because if someone you know has had building work by a builder, they've gone through the whole build and they will still recommend them, then that is worth so much money in itself. As you go along the way and things crop up, builders will always have a little bit of a dig at you or you'll have a little bit of a dig at them. So you need to try and get a really good relationship and a really professional builder too. So my fifth tip with any kind of build, whether it's a big scale one or a smaller scale one, I would always barter. For example, our tiles upstairs in our bathrooms and in both of our bathrooms, we've got it from a bespoke tile shop. So if anyone said to me, oh, go to this bespoke tile shop, I would immediately think, no way, that sounds really expensive. But because it was an independently run shop, the guy was so, so lovely. And he had a massive range of tiles I could choose from. And by the time we worked it all out, and I bartered a little bit, the tiles actually came in lower than they would have cost me if I got them from B&Q or Topps Tiles. So it was really, really worth going in there. And because I did bulk buy, he did give me a really, really good discount. So definitely don't be afraid to barter with shops, especially if you're shopping locally, because they will be appreciative of your custom. They're still making a profit out of it. And they're also getting a loyal customer out of you if they treat you well. My sixth tip for you is to do it yourself. Do as much as you can yourself. If you need to strip things out, you need to strip kitchens out, you need to strip um, bathrooms out, then try and do as much as you can. Chris was brilliant when it came to this. Our house was completely covered, like ceiling, walls, every single area apart from the floor was covered in wallpaper. And bless him, he literally spent a whole week solidly stripping wallpaper. But by him doing that, it meant that we didn't have to pay for a decorator to do it and it just saved us so much money. Also, when it came to our bathroom, Chris was there helping him when he could, taking the bath down the stairs, and it just ended up saving us so much money over the period of time, um, because you don't have to pay people to do work that is very easy to do yourself. And obviously, we had to get the bathroom all replastered, so if Chris was chipping off tiles and he chipped off some plaster, it didn't really matter because we had to get it replastered anyway. The other thing I'd also say is if you can do the painting undercoat yourself, then it's definitely worth doing that, because all freshly plastered walls need to have a mist coat of paint and that can be applied kind of roughly it doesn't really matter if that's not done precisely but what I would say if your budget can stretch to it is I would definitely pay a decorator to do your kind of final coats of paint the reason I say this is because you spend so much money on all the work underneath that paintwork yet it's the paintwork that everybody will see and everyone will appreciate and if you've got wonky lines that you're cutting in on then that is what everyone will see and i feel like it kind of almost downgrades all the money you have invested into your home so what we actually did at the beginning was we did the painting work initially and then after probably about six months to a year we had it redecorated but professionally um, and I got a decorator in to do it and honestly I can't tell you what a difference it's made because the lines are just so crisp and I feel like now when I look at the walls I don't think oh that's not quite not right that's not quite right because it's just done so so well Right, tip seven is patience. I'm not sure this is exactly my forte here, but 
I would definitely say have some patience. I, when we were having our kitchen done, we had moved out of our house for six weeks and I was so desperate to move back in that I wanted the worktop ordered before the kitchen was fitted. And I was just trying to rush steps along and eventually it actually took longer than it would have done if I had just been a little bit more patient. You know, you think, oh, if I could get that done by next week, then it'll be so much further along. But in six months time, you're gonna forget about that kind of short time scale and if I were you, if you can be patient, and I know a build is really frustrating because it always goes over kind of schedule anyway, but if you can be patient, then I would definitely recommend that because you will be so grateful for it in the long run and it will end up costing you less as you won't be cutting corners and then you won't need to redo things in the long run. So my eighth tip that I wanna give you guys is research. There are so many different places to buy products from these days. So when you're looking to furnish your home or to buy the bigger products, always browse the internet. Don't go to like the first high street shop you see or the first online shop you see. I bought so many products from eBay. I would look on eBay and type in what I was looking for and the amount of times I found things so much cheaper than if I bought it from a usual kind of high street website. For example, our dining chairs, they were from um, Habitat and I think they were meant to be about 85 pounds a chair, but I found them on eBay for 25 pounds a chair and they are exactly the same. Same with our bar stores. I saw them online for about 120 pounds a chair, eBay, 80 pounds a chair. So you can find so many good bargains if you shop around. So make sure you do your research and don't like impulse buy. If you see something you like, go back home, search on the internet and I'm sure you're gonna find it cheaper. My ninth tip is back onto builders and what I would say is definitely hold back some money from your builders at the end. You want to give them a sort of snagging list and once they have completed the snagging list, that's when you pay your final balance. I just feel like if you pay your builders up front and you are kind of all square with them before they do your snagging list, they have no incentive to come back and finish the job. So what we did, we held a couple of grand back at the end and then wrote down everything we wanted him to do and then he just had an incentive and a reason to come back and finish that off so he could get his final payment from us. My 10th and final tip for you is to shop in the sales. We got all of our appliances, so our hob, our cookers, our fridge freezer, our washing machine, our dishwasher, all in the Black Friday sale. We saved hundreds of pounds by buying all our appliances in the Black Friday sale. So it was definitely worth just hanging on. Well, actually, we didn't hang on. We bought these quite far in advance for when our kitchen was ready, and we just stored them in our home. So we had less room in our home, but we did save so much money, so it was so worth us storing them for a little while. And another thing that I found so useful and a huge money saver was to go into local charity shops or on eBay as well and find some bits of furniture that you could upcycle. I absolutely love upcycling furniture. I will link some videos down below that I have done where I have upcycled furniture so you can see how easy it is and how you can make the piece of furniture so bespoke and so unique to your home. So definitely give it a go because you'll be so pleased with the outcome. So that's the end of my renovating tips video. I hope you enjoyed it. If I think of any more and you guys enjoy this video I will do another one and my new home tour is going to be coming very very soon so watch out for that thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time bye